In today's video, we are going to be looking at adding this spaceship to our space shooter game using Scratch. Now, as you can see, our little spaceship will move left and right depending on which arrow key you press. He can't move up or down, he just moves on that one axis. Okay, and eventually we will make him start to shoot and we'll have some enemies coming towards him from the other direction in later tutorials. You might also be able to hear in the background, I've got a very slight um, sound of a spaceship flying. Okay, so we're going to add that in as well to add a bit of immersion to our game. So it's going to immerse the player in our game and make them feel like they're actually in space flying that ship. Okay, so to get started, we're going to need to open up scratch and have open our previous bit of work where we had this scrolling background okay what we want to add in first of all today is a new sprite so go down to your blue sprite button at the bottom here in your sprites list go up to upload sprites now if you're in my class i'm going to give you access to the gray spaceship that you need if you're watching on youtube though check the link out in the video description below and you'll be able to access this spaceship for free when you open it up and bring it into Scratch, it comes out pretty big. So what you'll need to do is change the size in your Sprites Properties panel here from 100 down to 20% and press Enter. And that makes him a fair bit smaller. That looks like a more suitable size to me. Now the first thing we're going to do with our code is move this guy down to his starting position at the bottom of the page. So I want you to go to the Events tab and drag out when the green flag is clicked. So when we start our game, and then go to motion and change the x and y value so choose the go to x set it to zero and go to y and choose minus 140. okay think back to last lesson when we looked at this x and y axis setup in scratch if you use zero for the x axis that's putting you right in the center of the page if you use minus 140 for the y axis it brings you down the page not quite at the bottom but close to it so somewhere around here and if we go back to scratch and run our game now, you'll see that this guy will move down to his starting position at the bottom center of the page. Okay, that looks good. What we're going to do now is get this spaceship moving. So the way we move him is with our left and right arrow keys. So we need the computer always listening out for when the user presses the left arrow key or the right arrow key. And when they do press either of those, the spaceship needs to move in the appropriate direction. So to do that, we use if statements. So in your control tab here, I want you to drag out two if statements. So if we're pressing the left arrow key, we're gonna move him to the left. If we're pressing the right arrow key, we're gonna move the spaceship to the right. Okay, now before we start, um, actually coding up the movement, we have to tell the computer what speed he's going to move at. Okay, so to do that, we're going to need to create a variable. So over in your variables tab here, make yourself a new variable. Now remember, a variable is like a bucket that holds information. In today's bucket, we're holding the speed at which our spaceship travels. Now that speed can change, so variables can change. So that information inside the bucket can be tipped out and thrown away, and it can be replaced with some new data. So let's give our variable a name, or our bucket a name. It is going to be x speed. Okay, it's a meaningful name because we are traveling along the x-axis, and it's the speed that our spaceship will be traveling along, at the, along the x-axis. Make sure for all sprites is checked and then click on OK. The first thing I want you to do is I want you to bring up this orange block that says set my variable to zero and snap it in below those coordinates. We're going to change my variable to x speed and leave it as zero. So that's just saying the speed at which we start at is going to be zero, which means we're not moving anywhere. Okay, so our spaceship, when we run the game, will just be sitting completely still. If though we move to the left, we want him if we move to the left, if we press the left arrow, we want him to move to the left. So let's go to our sensing tab here and select if the key space is pressed and change that space to the left arrow. Do the same again for the other if then statement, but make it if key right arrow is pressed. And now we just need to tell the computer what to do if we press either of these two arrows and we just need to move the speed up a little bit so we actually get a bit of movement taking place so first thing we need to do 
is change this variable x speed from 0 to a more appropriate speed. So in variables, let's bring out the same block that sets my variable to 0. I'm going to change it to set x speed to minus 5 if we're going to the left and 5 if we're going to the right. Again, that comes back to this axis here. Remember the x-axis is the red axis. If we move to the left, we end up in the negatives. So if we move at minus 5, that's a nice speed to move in the left um, direction. If we come across to the right-hand side of the x-axis, we're moving into the positives on the x-axis. So if we move it at speed 5, it's going to move us in that direction to the right at a reasonable speed. Okay, those two blocks can now be connected up and we want to wrap them up inside of a forever loop. So go back to control here and wrap a forever loop around them. If we didn't have that forever loop there, the computer would read that code once and then just forget about it for the rest of the program and we wouldn't be able to move our spaceship. By putting a forever loop around it, the computer is always listening out for when we press the left key or the right arrow key. Okay, so by snapping that in there, we should get some movement. Let's have a look. What I'm going to do is tap the left arrow key once. Okay, nothing happens. If I tap the right arrow key, nothing happens. All right, so there is one block of code that I still need to add, as I've just remembered. What it is, is we need to actually tell the computer to move our spaceship. We've told it what speed we want it to move at, but we haven't actually said, oi, start moving. So go back to motion, and we want to change the x-axis here. So just put this at the bottom of the forever loop. So it's still inside this forever loop but just outside those if statements. And we're just going to change x by x speed. There we go. So that should get him moving. That was my mistake before. So we press the green flag. Now when we press our arrow keys, I'm just going to tap the right one. He moves all the way to the right. If I tap the left one, he moves all the way to the left. So he's moving at a good speed and in the right directions. The issue is he's moving too far. So if I tap the arrow key, I don't want him to keep moving. I only want him to keep moving if I actually hold down the arrow key. But while I'm tapping it, I want him to, um, don't want him to keep moving that far. So if I'm not touching an arrow key, he should be stopped. Okay, so there's one more line of code to add to that to get that working. What we're going to do is when we press an arrow key, we're going to move him, but we're going to gradually slow him down. So go to your variables tab and change I'll bring in the one that says set my variable to zero again and put that right at the very bottom there of your forever loop. We're going to set x speed to, and we need to bring in an operator here. It's going to be the multiply operator. And back to your variables and grab that x speed. So we're going to set the x speed to x speed times 0 0.9. And that is just going to slow him down when you take your finger off the arrow keys. So now if I run it and tap to the left, he moves to the left, but then just comes to a slow crawl. Tap it to the right, he moves to the right, and then just slows down and stops moving. Okay, so you can see that with the X speed values up there. So if I move it to the left, he moves quite quick, and then slow, slow, slow. You can't even see him moving. But when he gets all the way to zero, it means he's stopped moving to the left. Okay, so that works pretty well. So I'm going to stop that there now, um, and I'm going to make this x speed variable disappear off the screen. We don't need to see that, so just go to your variable tab here and uncheck that box. So that's it. That's how you make the spaceship move across the bottom of the screen using the left and the right arrow keys. The last thing I want to add today is a little bit of sound. As I said before, sound helps your player feel like they're actually in the game. Okay, so what we're going to do is just put the sound of a spaceship engine running very quietly in the background. And to do that, we're just going to go to Control, ah, sorry, Events, and we're going to bring out a new when the green flag is clicked. And what I want to do is I want to play a sound. First of all, let's bring in the sound that we want. So go to your Sounds tab at the top, go down to the blue button that says Choose a Sound, and I want you to search for a sound that's already in Scratch. If you go to the Space theme up here, we're looking for this one here called Space Noise. Hover over the play button, and you'll hear that space noise. So click on that. Now you can have a preview of what it sounds like just here. If you just press play, 
it runs for about two, three seconds at the very most. Okay, so let's go back to our code and put that into our game. So when the green flag is clicked, go to your sounds and we're going to play space noise sound until it's done. Give that a run. We can hear the sound. The issue is it stops after the two seconds. So let's wrap it up in a forever loop so that sound keeps playing throughout our game. Okay, I want that sound to be always playing in the background. So let's have a listen. Okay, that sounds pretty good. The issue is though, when the sound stops after it's two or three seconds, there's a very slight pause. Have a listen. Okay, and that's a bit of a glitch in Scratch. Okay, there's no real way of avoiding it in this game, but there's one way we can cover it up so people don't really hear it. What I want you to do is go back to your sounds tab. We're going to edit this sound wave here. What I'm going to get you to do is highlight the very start of it and press delete on your keyboard. We're deleting the start of the sound wave and we're going to highlight the end of it and delete that as well. Now we've got a sound wave that's pretty similar in volume all the way along. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that. So just press copy there and I'm going to paste it multiple times. Okay, at the moment you can just see under here that the, um, the length of this space noise is about two and a half seconds. If I paste in a few copies of that, it goes up to about 19 seconds. Okay, so that's pretty good. I'm going to keep pressing paste until it gets to about a, a minute's worth of noise. Okay, about there is one minute's worth of noise. So now when I go back to my code, I don't need to change anything as such. If I press play, we're going to get a whole minute of sound without any little weird pauses. Only after one minute will we hear that pause. So it's going to be a lot less noticeable for the user. So now we can play. There's no real obvious pause anymore in our sound. It is a little bit loud though, so what I can do back in sounds here is just make it softer. I need to be very quiet, so let's try that. Okay, hopefully you can hear that through your speakers, but that sounds a lot better. It's just a bit of ambient noise in the background. So that's all I'm going to show you in this video. You now know how to scroll left and right, and you also know how to edit sounds to include them in your game to help immerse the player a little more in the gameplay. Okay, I will see you in our next video where we're going to learn how to shoot out of this spaceship.